Now uh, we would like to take a look at the physical meaning of reduction to a first brilliant zone. So when we classify lattice vibrations, it is, uh, we said it is enough to consider k values only in the first brilliant zone. So solving the normal modes of a 1D monatomic uh, Brave lattice, we found that the uh, k uh, values are uh, periodic and uh, they only have discrete values um, in the first brilliant zone, and then it's repeated. So to see this physically, we consider a k value that is pi divided by 2a. So when k is pi divided by 2a, that's equal to 2 pi over lambda, uh, we can see that uh, the uh, pi's will cancel, and we will have uh, lambda is equal to 4a. So lambda is equal to 4a, uh, for example, we can consider a transverse wave for this illustration. So here I have uh, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five lattice points. The distance between the first one and the last one will be 4a. So I will have one full wavelength in this. And therefore, uh, if this is a transverse wave, we can start uh, at a minimum uh, and then we can go to a maximum and then we can go back to the uh, minimum. So this is going to be one full uh, wavelength. Now, uh, if we consider uh, pi over 2a plus 2 pi over a, so that, that is basically uh, the period of our uh, uh, k values. So pi over 2a plus 2 pi over a will give us 5 pi divided by 2a. Uh, so that will be equal to 2 pi over lambda. Again, the pi's will cancel and we will find uh, that lambda must be equal to 4a over 5, so that's 0.8a. So uh, 4a, that is the distance between the first uh, atom and the last atom, uh, divided by 0.8a means that we're going to fit five wavelengths in between these two points. So uh, starting from the first one, so you can see here I have uh, fit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wavelengths. And um, as you can see, what the atoms are actually doing is identical to what I had at lambda is equal to 4a. So you can see that lambda equals 4a and 0.8a will describe the same physical situation, but the shorter wave has more oscillations. So we're going to see more oscillations here, but as far as the observable that these, um, these atoms, what these atoms are doing is basically uh, the same. It's identical to lambda is equal to 4a situation. So uh, we can see that these two situations are identical. So uh, indeed uh, our k values are periodic with um, 2 pi over a, while omega values, omega versus k is periodic with uh, the delta k of 2 pi over a and we see uh, the same situation occurring uh, when we have a k value in the first brilliant zone and also a k value in the uh, in the first brilliant zone that is um, increased by one period. So <clears throat> another important concept in these uh, elastic waves uh, will be uh, something that is uh, basically important in uh, wave mechanics that's group velocity and phase velocity. So when we talk about the propagation velocity of a plane wave, uh, this is the phase velocity. It's the ratio omega uh, to k ratio, omega divided by k. And you can see this here. The propagation speed of a wave is its wavelength divided by its period or wavelength multiplied by its frequency. So if I uh, divide and multiply by 2 pi, lambda over 2 pi times 2 pi f, uh, 2 pi f is our omega and k is 2 pi over lambda, so it will be omega divided by k. So indeed, this is the propagation uh, speed of uh, the wave. The velocity of propagation of a wave packet when you have uh, more uh, components uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the wave, it's called the group velocity. So this is like the generalized version of uh, phase velocity. It is the derivative of omega with respect to k. Uh, 
uh, the derivative of omega with respect to k would be identical to omega over k if this is a single plane wave but if you have a wave packet that will not be the case so the group velocity is the velocity of energy propagation in the medium for a wave packet and since we have a dispersive medium that is there is dispersive medium implies we have a relationship between omega and k that is uh, not linear its dispersion relationship different wave modes will propagate with different velocities so omega as a function of k uh, is nonlinear and it we will see different wave modes will propagate with different velocities and the group velocity will be then uh, the uh, gradient of omega with respect to k so that is the generalized version in, in three dimensions okay so if we go back to our one-dimensional monatomic lattice case uh, omega we have found to be two square root c over m c was our uh, spring constant uh, absolute value of sine k a over 2 if i take a derivative of this i will obtain from k a over 2 a over 2 uh, so 2 squared c over m a over 2 and derivative of sine is cosine so this will give me a group velocity uh, c a square over m parenthesis square root cosine k a over 2 now notice that i have gotten rid of this uh, absolute value here because a positive or negative group velocity uh, makes sense so it depends on which uh, in which direction the wave is propagating so we don't need the absolute value for this case so at the first Brillian zone boundary, if we look at what is going on, when k is equal to plus or minus pi over a, cosine plus or minus pi over a times a over 2 will give us cosine uh, plus or minus pi over 2, which is 0. So that means we have uh, for k values in the Brillian zone boundaries, standing waves uh, being built up. And if you remember from our previous discussion, that is basically the Bragg uh, condition, Bragg diffraction condition um, for elastic waves. So when we have um, k is equal to plus or minus pi over a, there will be constructive interference of elastic waves and we will have standing waves forming. Now, <clears throat> for the last part, uh, I want to talk about this force constant c. So that's our spring constant c. So uh, when we talk about uh, the general uh, case, when we have atoms interacting not only with their neighbors, but uh, also with further uh, neighbors, uh, we can write the generalized equation of motion as ma, md square u and dt square is sum over p c p u n plus p minus u n. So the displacement from equilibrium of the n plus p atom minus the displacement of the atom uh, at position NA. So this means that uh, we are including all interactions here. So uh, once again, we have the traveling wave solution A e to the i k and A minus omega t. So you, if you take a derivative, first derivative with respect to time gives us minus i omega u n. Second derivative gives us minus omega square u n. So on the left hand side, we have the same situation here minus m omega square u n. And on the right hand side, uh, we have sum over p c p. Um, so u n plus p will be will have a phase difference with respect to u n by an amount e to the i k p a. So e to the i k p a u n minus u n. And because we have u n on the right hand side and left hand side, they will cancel, and we will find minus m omega square is sum over p c p e to the i k p a minus one. So uh, minus m omega square will be sum over p positive values cp e to the i k p a minus 1 and if uh, we write we also include the negative values this can be written as sum over p positive c of minus p e to the minus i k p a minus 1 so uh, p equals to 0 you can see will give us a 0 anyway so that is not included so this will give us uh, minus m omega square equals sum over p positive cp e to the i k p a plus e to the minus i k p a minus 2. Why can I uh, write it this way? Because we have cp is equal to c minus p. We have a symmetric situation. The atoms to the right 
uh, right hand side and the atoms to the left hand side uh, as long as we have the same uh, distance between the uh, atoms that are interacting it will be identical so cp will be equal to c minus p that is the symmetry requirement okay so uh, if you go back to this Euler's formula, cosine kPa plus I sine kPa for e to the I kPa, and cosine kPa minus I sine kPa for e to the minus I kPa, you will see that you will obtain in two parentheses cosine kPa minus 1, because the sine kPa's will cancel, and we will find omega squared is 2 over m, also operating the minus sign on the left right hand side, sum over p positive, 1 minus cosine kPa. So what is this? This is our um, dispersion relation. We note that Cp is equal to C minus p. Now, we're going to multiply both sides by cosine rKa dk. So r is an integer and we will integrate over the first brilliant zone. So when we do that, uh, we will have uh, in, uh, 2 over m sum over p positive cp integral from minus pi over a to plus pi over a dk 1 minus cosine pka cosine rka. So this will be uh, on the right hand side. Uh, but the other side was omega square so integral from minus pi over a to plus pi over a omega square cosine rka dk now uh, for the 1 minus cosine pka cosine rka this will be cosine rka minus cosine rka cosine pka so the the integral of cosine rka will give us 1 over ra sine rka this is an integral over k from minus pi over a to plus pi over a so if you put um, k is equal to pi over a you will obtain integer multiple of pi in the sign which is zero uh, and for the second term we have minus the integral from minus pi over a to plus pi over a cosine pka cosine rka dk and uh, to do this integral i note here a trigonometric identity uh, cosine of p minus rka is cosine pka cosine rka plus sine pka sine rka and cosine of p plus rka is cosine pka cosine rka minus sine pka sine rka okay so uh, i can write this uh, cosine pka cosine rka as the sum of these two divided by 2 so this will be integral from minus pi over a to plus pi over a cosine p minus rka plus cosine p plus rka divided by 2 dk so the first term 1 over 2 p minus ra sine p minus rka the second term 1 over 2 p plus ra sine p plus rka so this will be evaluated between minus pi over a and plus pi over a so if p is not equal to r when you substitute here uh, pi over a you will see that the sign will give you a zero so uh, p must be equal to r for this to be non-zero now if p is equal to r i go back to uh, this integral here p is equal to r will give me cosine zero plus uh, cosine uh, P plus R K A so that's going to be uh, the first term cosine 0 is 1 and uh, for the cosine P plus R K A uh, I have the similar situation here 1 over 2 P plus R A sine P plus R K A if you substitute plus or minus pi over A that will give us 0 so the only non-zero term will come from the integral 1 over 2 dk so 1 over 2 dk integral will give me uh, basically um, k values so that's going to be delta k pi over a to minus pi over a 2 pi over a multiplied by 1 over 2 so that will be pi over a so i find that i have minus 2 over m uh, cr because i have set p is equal to r times pi over a is equal to this integral minus pi over a to plus pi over a omega square cosine rka dk so we can uh, isolate CR or CP here because R and P are the same. 
cp is minus ma over 2 pi integral over the first billion zone dk omega square cosine dka so what we have done is we have found a way to calculate the force constant at a range of pa so p an integer multiple of uh, lattice constants for a structure with a monatomic basis so uh, we have obtained the general uh, dispersion relation when uh, all interactions are included uh, also taking into account the symmetry of the crystal that cp and c minus p should be the same and we have found a way to evaluate cp knowing uh, the omega versus k relationship so you know that omega versus k is uh, known then you can perform this integral in order to calculate the force constant at a range of pa okay so um, to summarize we talked about reduction to first brilliant zone concept uh, omega of omega versus k is periodic uh, and uh, it only has uh, discrete values well it only has um, meaningful values in the first brilliant zone and then it's repeated we said but we wanted to give this a uh, physical interpretation so i have looked at what happens when k is equal to pi over 2a and when k is equal to pi over 2a plus 2 pi over a which is the period uh, of omega of k and i found that the observables the at what the atoms are doing is identical so that makes sense then we distinguish uh, if we have a single plane wave the propagation speed is the phase velocity if we have a group of uh, modes if we have a wave packet then the uh, the generalized uh, version of phase velocity is group velocity and group velocity is a good name because it's for a group of uh, modes so it's basically the velocity of energy propagation in the medium because we have uh, omega as a function of k uh, for different wave modes uh, in a dispersive medium the generalized form of the group velocity is uh, delta k omega k and uh, we have applied this to our monatomic uh, lattice with a, with, a, with a basis of one atom that's that's why it's monatomic and it's one dimensional and we found that indeed when we substitute k is equal to plus or minus pi over a the gr group velocity is zero so it's a standing wave and we have also talked about how to calculate the force constant at a range uh, pa uh, between two atoms uh, this treatment that we have done here gave us the general form of the dispersion relation and also the force constant how to calculate the force constant knowing the dispersion relation.